news out of Libya now. The airport in Tripoli, the nation's capital now, has been taken over by a rebel group. This word crossing only 15 minutes ago, and we're told that the situation is tense. Tanks are surrounding the buildings. No one's allowed in the building. This after what, a year of unrest in that country. Tony Baduran's a research fellow for the Foundation for Defense of Democracies, and sir, good morning to you. Uh, we brought you on to talk about Syria. We'll get that topic in a moment. But what do you make of this unrest now in, in Libya? If the government itself, or, or what's left of it, uh, cannot even uh, take care of the airport? Well, that's been one of the unfortunate uh, um, fallouts of the intervention in Libya. Is that uh, the various cleavages and fissures of that society are very much coming out to the forefront and we and we see this inability yet to have any real central authority over the rest of the country so we'll have to just keep an eye on this now, and what's the effect of that though Tony if this continues like this without any real authority well obviously I mean you have a potential for uh, for lawlessness and uh, you know it, it could it could develop a lot more in, in, in worse ways however it, I mean it's still very much in um, an unfolding situation and the, the the one thing about Libya is unlike Syria for instance is it's uh, it's very much still on the periphery whereas Syria is very much in the in the center of things you, you know the Islamist fighters uh, there's been a pretty good number that have come out of Libya they've joined the battle in Afghanistan Pakistan sure. to a lesser degree Iraq you could argue um, what, what have you noticed or watched as they have jockeyed for their new position Everybody's jockeying. It's them, whatever Islamist uh, and jihadist groups that are in Africa as well, and uh, as well as, as tribal uh, elements in uh, in uh, in Libya as well. So everybody now is trying to carve out uh, a space for themselves in in Libya, and and this is it's just going to be, like I said, an unfolding situation until some sort of a. Yeah. Um, a central authority takes place. Uh, we are watching that. We're also watching this. Meanwhile, in Syria, the the, um, the leader of that country speaking out for the first time since a massacre left more than a hundred civilians dead. Nearly half the victims in that massacre were children. Their bodies found bound. Many shot at close range. President Bashar Assad blaming foreign-backed terrorists and extremists for the bloodshed despite mounting evidence uh, that pro-regime militias perhaps carried out the killings. Uh, Tony, he made a speech for the first time since January. Uh, that suggests he is ready for a fight. What did you take from that? Well, it's, it's nothing new, really. I mean, he's been saying that terrorists has been, have been behind uh, the popular uprising in Syria since day one. And he's been doing, unfortunately, as, as heinous as the massacre has been, he's actually been doing this for the last 15 months. So, I mean, this is one particular incident that's, that's particularly uh, uh, blood, bloodthirsty and, uh, you know, blood curling because of the kids that are involved. Uh, however, this has been his conduct for the last 15 months anyway, so the, and he's been, he is going to fight to the very end. That's, there's, no, there's no doubt about so, that. So you have the United Nations that's not moving on this. Um, I, I'm not sure if you believe NATO has a role or not, given the geographic position there of Syria. You have Russia who has said, forget about it, we're not going to help the UN or help the U.S. get in there. China, similar. Is the world now going to sit back? and watch these two sides go at it for an indefinite period of time? Look, the, we can talk about the UN, we can talk about NATO. The, the fact of the matter is that without U.S. leadership, nothing happens, and that's just the way it is. And the, the problem is that the Obama administration has decided that it's going to sort of uh, lean on the Russians to find some sort of a solution for Syria. And that, I think, is a, is a major misreading. Uh, if they think they're going to, quote, unquote, shame the Russians, that's very misguided. Uh, the Russians, I mean, I'll remind you what they did in 2002, in 2004, in uh, the theater attacks in Moscow and the Beslan school, when they went in and shot people up regardless of collateral damage. So they, they're not going to be shamed into anything. And I don't think it's in their interest to interfere on the side of the U.S. in Syria as well. So I think until the Obama administration realizes this and takes leadership on the situation in Syria, nothing's going to happen. Well, what do you think those conversations are like at the White House? Well, from the leaks that are coming out, it's, it's surprising how, how little there is in terms of strategic thinking on this. I mean, there, if you heard the, the Secretary of State uh, the other day saying that, you know, we know that the Syrians are not going to listen to us, but maybe they might listen to the Russians. And I think that this kind of sort of thinking about and hoping about some sort of a Russian role in changing Assad's mind is thoroughly misguided. Wow. Um, I don't know if he'll make another speech or not. Perhaps he will, perhaps he won't. But, but the two sides are now digging in. Right. A and what you find based on history is that when the massacres happen, and the world does nothing and the smoke clears and you find out you know the true loss of life after it's over these world leaders kick themselves in the behind and say well, I should have done something 
Well, yes. You think about Bill Clinton in Africa in the mid-90s. Right. Is right. that what is unfolding here? Well, it's not, it yet that that? it's not yet at that scale. But the, definitely, look, Syria is a divided society along uh, various uh, cleavages. There's, there's uh, sectarian and ethnic divides and social, other social divides. So now what's going on is that the, the, the regime is implicating the, the Alawite minority for, to which he belongs in these massacres. So you see they're arming villagers, they're using these uh, Alawite paramilitaries, and he's trying to intentionally inflame the situation. Uh, and he's trying to do this to deter people from taking action against him. But all this is going to do, the, the longer this persists, and the administration acknowledges this, is that it's going to make it uh, more bloody and more tense uh, moving forward. Tony Badran, thank you. It's good to get your perspective this morning. Thank you for thank coming you. in today.